What I wanted to cover in this section was some things, ways in which you can use the platform to sort of personalize your customer's experience and just keep um, more focusing on people who've shopped with you more than once, not focusing on um, your new customers to give them that extra little bit of um, better experience or personal or for, suited to their needs more. Now, the first thing I really want to say before I start this is that a lot of what I'm going to cover here is um, more advanced uh, things you can do with the network. And I always think that if you're starting off um, your OFN journey, it's always better to be able to do the basics really well and um, sort of feel as if you on, on got that in hand and you're comfortable before sort of progressing and adding in these extra features. Um, because it's it's you'll give your customers a much better overall experience if um, you're comfortable doing what you're doing, you're managing things like your whole enterprise. Uh, but if you sort of add in too much too quickly, you get stressed and then you could potential to make mistakes or pass on this kind of uh, overburden to your customers, which is never good. So that's my little caveat. Um, so it, these might be things that if you're just starting on your journey, you come and look at this video in six months time and think, yeah, I'll start doing that now. So the things that I wanted to look at were subscriptions. Um, and this, I'm coming at them as a point of view, as a business model where they're not your primary um, source of business. So some people on OFN will set up their uh, their OFN site just to offer veg boxes or a sort of box schemes. But this is sort of coming at it from the front view. If you have a shop front and you're thinking about maybe adding an extra little thing to uh, for your regular customers. And then I look at some ways you can personalize your customer experience for those who've already shopped with you in the past. And then finally, um, thinking about um, uh, running a social media campaign now to sort of encourage the people who are shop with you, shopping with you now to come back in the new year, which I think is um, what we all want. And um, yeah, January and February are always quite sparse months after Christmas for any kind of business. So subscriptions, if you've not had a look at what they are on the platform yet, what do we mean specifically on OFM when we talk about subscriptions? Well, we think of what we mean is like an automated order, which is passed, uh, placed on behalf of the customer. And so this kind of, this is totally flexible. So it can include any kind of product in your shop front or in your product range. It's, doesn't, it's not exclusive to boxes or box schemes. Um, you've got total flexibility over the range of frequencies you offer for your subscriptions. Um, so you could offer subscriptions to customers that are like, I don't know, every nine days or something, but, and, but it, you don't want to have too many different frequencies. You want something that's manageable. So it, sticking to the week fortnightly and monthly is probably best, but you could go into different time frames if you wanted to. And then um, the point to note here is that at the moment, subscriptions are solely managed by you as an enterprise owner or manager. They're not something that a, um, a customer can manage on their own. So um, that's just something to bear in mind that that's the way subscriptions run at the moment. So there's lots of different advantages to offering subscriptions to your customer, even if it's not your primary um, source of revenue. Um, and the main one really is that it's a sort of a regular guaranteed income for your hub and for your suppliers. And it helps your suppliers plan their weekly production if they know that um, they're always going to have, uh, I don't know, two loaves of bread from Mrs. Blogs, six loaves of bread from um, Mr. C, etc. Um, they might get other orders that come in periodically from customers that will change their mind every week, but they know they've got some orders that will always be there. And then the other little nice thing that I think about subscriptions is that um, when the order cycle opens, that's the point at which your subscription order is automatically placed. And when this happens, it sends an um, email to your customers. And this email is like um, a free little marketing tip, as it were, or hint. It, the customer will get this email to say your subscription has been placed. And then they might think, oh, I just remembered I also want X, Y, Z this week. So they might go to your shop to get it rather than just popping out to the shops like nearby. From your customers, um, if you've got a customer who orders like pretty much the same thing every week, they might order, uh, they may say order the same three things and then top up with 
the odd extra one or two now and again or change the one or two. Um, it means that they don't have to sort of worry about getting on the order cycle early to place these their order for this item. They don't even have to spend the time placing the order for those, uh, those items every week. Um, so it reduces anxiety, reduces time saving from them, and it also can help them plan their weekly budget if they know that they've sort of got that pot of money that they've allocated to get their bread and their milk and their eggs. That's a part of their budget um, they've allocated in advance. So here again, I, I probably too, too many cautions on this part, but um, subscriptions are a relatively new feature to FN. They have been around for probably 18 months or so. Um, officially, they are still in beta phase, but um, I think that really? most sort of 99.9% .9 of um, if the problems with them, there aren't any problems at the current, but sometimes there are, um, they do crop up. Um, and sort of globally, UK offers more subscriptions than any other instance in the world. So we're kind of pioneering the way. But the main advantage of them being in beta phase is that um, there is room for development and we are actively developing them. So there will be improvements in the future. Um, I can't give you a time frame on that, but there will be. Um, you'll get these slides afterwards and there's a link in the slides of how to set them up if you've not read that section before in the user guide and there's also a new section in the user guide which is all about how your customers will experience OFN when they shop with you and that might be just something you read through before you think about offering subscriptions um, just to see what it looks like on the customer's point of view, um, what notifications do they get etc. And um, if this is something you really want to set up for your enterprise, which I hope it is at some point, then um, do drop us an email and we can arrange a screen share, talk you through it and then send you the recording so you've got this reference, etc. So you're not pondering and tearing your hair out and getting frustrated, we can help you through it. So this is like a little bit of a graphic about how they work. Um, and sort of the, the first step is you get the information from the customer. Um, so really this is uh, what you might do is look down your customer list and see you know who your regulars are and you can spot they order almost the same thing each week so then you'd go and approach them and say would you like a subscription and if you do what would you like in it how would you like to pay how like to, to collect it your items etc and then the next sort of concept in this is getting a bit technical i don't want to go into too much of the details is that you create something with a schedule which is like um a way of grouping your order cycles um, so you might call it's just a name really a schedule so you might have a schedule called weekly and then every time you create an order cycle you add that sort of name to it um, in the relevant box and um, that it means that that order cycle when it opens will automatically place a subscription that's also got that name attached to it and then you create a subscription which is a once um, one time only kind of thing, bit of admin you have to do just to add uh, the products that the customer wants to their basket for their subscription. And then it will just continue. So every week from then on, you can just sit back and that order will be placed and the customer will be, know that it's been placed and they can come and collect it. Um, so in terms of weekly management, this is a screenshot of your order cycle um, admin page. And then you probably noticed it. You've got that little box that says schedules and that's where you'd put the schedule in if you're gonna um, have subscriptions. And then um, what happens is that when your order cycle opens, the order is created um, the, automatically. The customer gets sent an order confirmation email. When your order cycle closes, that's the point at which payment is automatically taken from your customer if they opt to pay by Stripe or card. Um, so that's a commonly asked question from hubs and customers like, when will the, the money actually go out of my account or when will we actually get the money? And then when your order cycle closes, you also get a subscription summary email. So this will say, tell you like if any of your subscriptions have failed that week, and um, the most common reason for that is sort of like a, a customer's card has gone out of date um, of which they've registered. So then you need to contact the customer and just say, Look, I'm sorry, you need to pay for this week's subscription a different way, maybe by cash, but can you update your, your card details for the following week so that it will go ahead as planned. 
so a few little tips here is that I'd strongly advise against allowing your customers to edit or cancel orders um, for themselves or your order cycle is open if you're offering subscriptions. Um, then of course the customer, if they change their mind and they want to cancel or they want other things, or stuff like that, they can always email you or phone you and if they've got that right and that that's uh, that is totally correct but I it's it just it causes confusion for you as a hub if they kind of can able to do things for themselves um in the way that the system is currently set up um if an item is out of stock when in it's in their automated order their subscription order then when they get their um customer their order confirmation email it will appear with quantity zero um, so the customer will know that they won't get it the price of the products in a description will be the price at the point of which the order is placed. So it won't be um, that if a customer sets up a subscription now and uh, say a loaf of bread is a pound, if they're still having that subscription in five years time and the baker has put up their bread, um, price of their bread to £1.50, the customer will be paying £1.50 for it in five years time. They won't be committed to still supplying their bread at a pound. Um, and subscriptions can be edited at any time. So if someone says that um, they want to have uh, two loaves of bread instead of one, or they want one loaf of bread instead of two, etc. You can change that. Um, if a customer goes on holiday, they can be paused for two weeks or three weeks or however long. Um, quite often, I've seen um, uh, that people um, who like local food they might grow their own fruit and vegetables over the summer and so they pause their subscription over the summer and then they reactivate it in the winter months when they're not growing their own in their garden and of course they can be cancelled if someone decides oh, i don't want to go down that route anymore um when you have a subscription or any order through the rfn um if you want to have like place a second order um, or if you want to top up that order, you think, oh, I've forgotten such or you've got a subscription for milk, eggs and bread and you think that, oh, actually, I want apples as well. Um, the way that works in the platform is that it actually generates a second order, um, which is fine and uh, that has no disadvantage for the customer other than if you have a collection fee or a delivery fee and then they might say, well, I don't want to pay twice for my delivery because I'm paying for it anyway. So if you um, you can use tags and there's a link to the, a method in these slides it takes you through this step by step to um, offer those customers who have, are on subscriptions only. And so you don't want to offer free delivery to everybody, but it offers them to chance for their top up orders to have free delivery, mm -hmm. um, which is a good thing. And I think it's probably right. If I was a customer, I wouldn't want to pay twice for my delivery. Um, so a nice a few thing little tips so when you're deciding on what products to offer on subscription i'd really avoid seasonal items because if you're going to put strawberries for instance or locally grown strawberries on your subscription and they're only available for three months of the year then you're just um, sending out an email every week to the customer uh, to say um, they're not in stock which it seems pointless um, I would avoid uh, having a subscription set up for uh, very um, low total basket spend, uh, especially if you're using Stripe or um, an automated, well, Stripe is the only automated payment service you can use with subscriptions. Um, this is because um, obviously a 20p transaction fee uh, plus the percentage of the total cost, but the 20p becomes a significant of a small quantity, whereas it's a, a much uh, lower, proportion of a large basket and um but you could say that that would discriminate um against those who perhaps um live on their own and they only want a small small amount of food so um in which case can you group items together in a box or something um so that um a, a, the total basket is it is appropriate and economical for you to deal with but it also meets the customer's needs um, and obviously with subscriptions, uh, you, the point of doing them is to set them up to take out your admin load, workload as well as um, to reduce uh, the customer's time um, spent faffing around on the internet placing orders. Um, so um, 
you probably don't want to have to go in and um, up the stock level of your subscription products every week. So what you can do is to create a new variant of a product um, which has infinite stock. And then you can use uh, the method outlined in these slides, which you'll have a link to, to hide that method, uh, that product, that variant from the shop front so that um, you don't um, accidentally have someone um, place 5,000 orders for this product. Um, if you have it as a sort of infinite stock on the shop front, then that could be a potential that you get overwhelmed with an orders that you, a number of orders that you can't fulfill. And then lastly, um, it's just a thing to think about that um, when your subscription orders are automatically placed for you, um, this is the point which stock is allocated to them. So it will occur like within the first few seconds of your order cycle opening. So if it's an item which is really high demand, um, I don't know what the best answer is this, but you probably don't want to allocate all of that supply to your subscriptions because then um, it will never appear on your shop front and someone will never know that you have eggs, for example, if they're already always gone by the time any human has got to your shop front. But that's up for you to judge. Um, that was just my thoughts in terms of a customer. So um, uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is something that um, in my head I term as the black art of OFN. And it's not a black art at all. It's uh, tags and tag rules. And um, using these to customize the experience of your um, no, I say personalize the experience of your existing customers. Um, the beauty of tags and they work best is if you're using it for customers who have already shopped with you. Um, so I think we all have experienced like Amazon or Google or all the big players. Um, you look at their shop and they've got so much data from us already about your browsing history and they try and force things on you from what you've looked at before and, you know, purchases a day. OFN doesn't do that. Um, um, I think that's a really good thing as a customer. I don't want to be forced to know th um, th to think that a platform knows things about me. But when someone has shot with you before, you do have things like their postcode. And so then you could make um, a delivery to their catchment area, a, a, a delivery based on their postcode. So you could put them in a catchment area. Um, Another nice thing is that you can, uh, if you have groups of friends who live close to each other, you can offer discounted delivery to them, or you can offer um, uh, trusted customers different ways to pay. So um, the real th key thing to think about when you're uh, reading about tags and tag rules or thinking about this, this is a key concept is that um, they're a way of uh, linking customers uh, with different shop features. Um, that's the two things that they link together. Um, so you can sort of uh, personalize different uh, the way different customers view order cycles, product shipping methods and payment methods. And here we're just really looking at um, how customers can access different shipping methods or payment methods based on their needs. Uh, once you know what their needs are, that is. So um, this is a nice little example. So you might have a, a, a customer who's in this blue house um, who lives in your five pound catchment area and you've already got a tag on them so that they get charged five pounds for delivery. And they are a really, really happy customer. So they go and um, tell all your, their neighbors about how brilliant your produce is. Are, is. And then suddenly their neighbors start um, saying oh i'm putting in an order from your hub and um i've seen this happen quite a few times on the support team over the last year um and uh, what's really nice is the it, 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 i think it's really good and um obviously if you're making a delivery to that road your overheads are less now per customer because you're delivering to five houses instead of one and it's really nice little thing to say thank you for that to um, sort of reduce the delivery cost for those five customers because you, it's not costing you so much and passing that on, it makes them even happier. Um, so there's a, there are different ways you can um, use the tags to customize delivery options for existing customers. The other thing that I wanted to, um, that is quite nice in terms of customer attention is that um, offering 
different payment methods for different customers, um, especially if they're trusted or loyal customers, because there's a huge number of advantages um, for your hub, probably, for offering um, the majority of your customers to pay by an automated method like Stripe or PayPal, because um, it means that really you've got the money at the point at which they place their order and you're not either spending a lot of time um, chasing um, them for their order or um, checking bank statements to make sure if they're going to pay by backs that they paid before you um, you deliver or if you're taking uh, cash on collection then you've got um, you've always got the risks then of you've got the product from the producer they've made it specially they've delivered it and then the customer doesn't turn up and they don't pay and then what you're going to do and you're sort of out of pocket so that's a really good reason for using stripe and paypal but at the same time not all customers are comfortable playing online and some people use cash as a primary way of managing their finances and their household budget and i think it's um this is where we're in a new position to recognize this and um, really change the way we work for those customers. And I think it, it I think it's really important that um, for them and as a community organization to do this. So there's a, a way, uh, there's a link in these slides to how to set this up so that you, um, for the customers you trust, you give them the option of paying by cash on delivery um, or, or collection, or you give them the option of paying by car, um, backs. Whereas for the people you don't know or new people or those that you've trusted in the past and they've let you down, then you the only way they get their order is that they have to pay by Stripe. So it gives you security as well. And then finally, um, I suppose this is sort of really for the here and now and very topical with Christmas. Um, sort of how can we um, reward people who shop now and give them a little incentive to come back in January or February? Um, and so there's lots of different things you might think of that um, uh, sort of that you might want to offer. You might want to offer them um, sort of ask, say set a threshold. So say um, if a customer spends £30, £50, £20, I don't know, whatever it is, um, in December, they get free delivery in January, or you give them a 5% discount in January, or they order for so many weeks in a row, you give them a little tidbit. Um, and I know that I've spoken to, I think it's Bow House in Scotland in the last week, and I think they're going to offer everyone who shopped with them in December a really uh, a small discount as a thank you if, if they shop in January and February. So these are the steps to how to set this up and um, obviously you promote it because it's a really great thing for the here and now. Um, then you identify customers who qualify, then you enable it and then after the end you don't want to keep giving them this benefit forever and a day because you'll be out of pocket basically so you have to take that benefit away. So how you promote the first step is promoting this sort of campaign now on your social media on your newsletter and Kay has got loads and loads of information of this on how to do this and advice and on the Facebook group and if you want any more advice just um, post there and I'm sure we can point you in the right direction. Then um, I, the next step is identify sort of it, the customers who qualify for this reward. So if you think about doing this now and then actioning it after Christmas, this isn't something you might do like when you're fed up of eating turkey and mince pies or you're fed up of those Zoom calls with your, um, with your family or your family's just driven you nuts and you just want to, to escape to the computer. So if you visit um, the orders page on your ad, um, OFN admin panel, there's some little tricks that you can play here. Obviously, if you want to filter by date, um, so if you're just offering this for orders placed in December or one particular week in December, then you filter uh, your orders by that particular date. And then distributor, um, for most of you who only manage one hub, then that would just be the name of your hub. But if you manage like multiple enterprises, then it'd be the name of the hub concerned. And then um, you can sort the orders that come up via this filtering alphabetically um, and that and I'll show you in a minute or you can sort them by total um, quantity terms and, uh, spent 
by just clicking on the uh, the top of the um, uh, uh, top row of the table. So in this example, I've um, used the IFN Demo Hub, and I've sorted for all orders. Well, filtered first for all orders in November, um, and then so that's the filter done. And then I click on the email and that sorts all um, the orders by alphabetically by email, which is effectively someone's customer name. And then if you're viewing this, you can just quickly scan through and you can see who's pl uh, placed an order same four times in a row and put them on the list and they qualify. So that, that's how you can do one thing. And then this is, um, very similar, but in this time I've done the same thing looking for all orders in November for the UFN Demo Hub. And then um, if, I, if you click on the total um, column, it will sort um, your orders um, numerically by, first of all, sort of smallest to largest, and then you can do it the other way around, largest to smallest, which is better. Um, so then you can sort of, you say, well, yeah, I've got so many, I know that customer paid, spent over 30 pounds, etc. cetera. Um, so then um, there's a link in the slides and actually I highly recommend, um, if you go to the global user guide um, and go to the hub managers tips section, there's now a section called how to's and there's lots of step-by-step -step how to's in there, including this one. And it's really like, do A, do B, do C, trying to break things down as easy as possible. Um, so uh, that's, it tells you there how to um, enable those customers who are eligible to get the reward. And then obviously in at the end of um, January or the end of February or whenever you want this reward to be removed, uh, you have to go and um, remove the tag or remove the tag rule and, uh, and then uh, the customer won't get their um, January 10% discount anymore. And the best thing I think probably to do there is to uh, just to remind you is when you set this up, um, also set a reminder in your Google calendar or whatever calendar you use, um, but sort of 1st of February, 1st of March, um, remove the reward, um, just so that you don't forget because we're all busy people and it's very easy to to sort of forget to do it and then come to the end of March saying, oh my God, I've given away 10% off the whole of March and that's something you didn't want to do. So I've rattled through a lot there and um, I didn't want to like spend too long on each section um, because I think it's really things that, um, uh, yeah, you can come back and revisit when you want 